Video 3 Rotate and Crop Crop Images Crop an image using the Crop Tool. 1. Select the Crop Tool. 2. Optional. Set Resample Options in the Options bar. To crop the image without resampling, default, make sure that the Resolution text box in the Options bar is empty. You can click the Clear button to quickly clear all text boxes. To resample the image during cropping, enter values for the height, width, and resolution in the options bar. The crop tool won't resample the image unless the width and or height and the resolution are provided. If you've entered height and width dimensions and want the values quickly exchanged, click the swap height and width icon. To resample an image based on the dimensions and resolution of another image, open the other image, select the crop tool, and click front image in the options bar. Then make the image you want to crop active. Resampling while cropping uses the default interpolation method in the general preferences. 3. Drag over the part of the image you want to keep to create a marquee. The marquee doesn't have to be precise. You can adjust it later. 4. If necessary, adjust the cropping marquee. To move the marquee to another position, place the pointer inside the bounding box and drag. To scale the marquee, drag a handle. To constrain the proportions, hold down Shift as you drag a corner handle. To rotate the marquee, Position the pointer outside the bounding box. The pointer turns into a curved arrow, and drag. To move the center point around which the marquee rotates, drag the circle at the center of the bounding box. Marquee can't be rotated in bitmap mode. 5. Set options to hide or shield the cropped portions. Specify whether you want to use a cropping shield to shade the area of the image that will be deleted or hidden. When shield is selected, you can specify a color and opacity for the cropping shield. When shield is deselected, the area outside the cropping marquee is revealed. Specify whether you want to hide or delete the cropped area. Select Hide to reserve the cropped area in the image file. You can make the hidden area visible by moving the image with the Move tool. Select Delete to discard the cropped area. The Hide option is not available for images that contain only a background layer. If you want to crop a background by hiding, convert the background to a regular layer first. 6. Do one of the following. To complete the crop, press Enter in Windows or Return in Mac OS. Click the Commit button in the Options bar or double-click inside the cropping marquee. To cancel the cropping operation, press Escape or click the Cancel button in the Options bar. Crop an image using the Crop command. 1. Use a selection tool to select the part of the image you want to keep. 2. Choose Image, Crop. Crop an image using the Trim command. The Trim command crops an image by removing unwanted image data in different ways than the Crop command. You can crop an image by trimming surrounding transparent pixels or background pixels of the color you specify. 1. Choose Image, Trim. 2. In the Trim dialog box, select an option. Transparent pixels to trim away transparency at the edges of the image leaving the smallest image containing non-transparent pixels. Top left pixel color to remove an area the color of the upper left pixel from the image. Bottom right pixel color to remove an area the color of the lower right pixel from the image. 3. Select one or more areas of the image to trim away. Top, bottom, left, or right. Transform perspective while cropping. The Crop tool has an option that lets you transform the perspective in an image. This is very useful when working with images that contain keystone distortion. Keystone distortion occurs when an object is photographed from an angle rather than from a straightened view. 
For example, if you take a picture of a tall building from ground level, the edges of the building appear closer to each other at the top than they do at the bottom. 1. Select the Crop tool and set the Crop Mode. 2. Drag the cropping marquee around an object that was rectangular in the original scene, although it doesn't appear rectangular in the image. You'll use the edges of this object to define the perspective in the image. The marquee doesn't have to be precise. You'll adjust it later. 3. Select Perspective in the Options bar and set the other options as desired. 4. Move the corner handles of the cropping marquee to match the object's edges. This defines the perspective in the image, so it's important to precisely match the object's edges. 5. Drag the side handles to extend the cropping bounds while preserving the perspective. Do not move the center point of the cropping marquee. The center point needs to be in its original position in order to perform perspective correction. 6. Do one of the following. Press Enter. Click the Commit button in the Options bar, or double-click inside the cropping marquee. To cancel the operation, press Escape or click the Cancel button in the Options bar. Rotate or flip an entire image. The Image Rotation commands let you rotate or flip an entire image. The commands do not work on individual layers or parts of layers, paths, or selection borders. If you want to rotate a selection or layer, use the Transform or Free Transform commands. Choose Image, Image Rotation, and choose one of the following commands from a submenu. 180 degrees rotates the image by a half turn. 90 degrees clockwise rotates the image clockwise by a quarter turn. 90 degrees counterclockwise rotates the image counterclockwise by a quarter turn. Arbitrary rotates the image by the angle you specify. If you choose this option, enter an angle between negative 359.99 or 359.99 in the angle text box. Then click OK. 4. Basic Color Correction Apply the Variations command. The Variations command lets you adjust the color balance, contrast, and saturation of an image by showing you thumbnails of alternatives. This command is most useful for average key images that don't require precise color adjustments. It does not work on indexed color images or 16-bit per channel images. 1. Choose Image, Adjustments, Variations. The two thumbnails at the top of the dialog box show the original selection, Original, and the selection with its currently selected adjustments, Current Pick. When you first open the dialog box, these two images are the same. As you make adjustments, the Current Pick image changes to reflect your choices. 2. Select the Show Clipping option if you want to display a preview of areas in the image that are clipped, converted to pure white or pure black by the adjustment. Clipping can result in undesirable color shifts, as distinct colors in the original image are mapped to the same color. Clipping does not occur when you adjust midtones. 3. Select what to adjust in the image. Shadows, midtones, or highlights adjust the dark, middle, or light areas. Saturation changes the degree of hue in the image. If you exceed the maximum saturation for a color, it may be clipped. 4. Drag the Fine Coarse slider to determine the amount of each adjustment. Moving the slider one tick mark doubles the adjustment amount. 5. Adjust the color and brightness. To add a color to the image, click the appropriate color thumbnail. To subtract a color, click the thumbnail for its opposite color. To adjust brightness, click a thumbnail on the right side of the dialog box. Clicking the thumbnails are cumulative. For example, Clicking the More Red thumbnail twice applies the adjustment twice. Each time you click a thumbnail, the other thumbnails change. The three Current Pick thumbnails always reflect the current choices. 
You can also save the settings you make in the Variations dialog box for reuse on other images. Adjust Hue and Saturation. 1. Do one of the following. Click the Hue Saturation icon or a Hue Saturation preset in the Adjustments panel. Choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation. Click OK in the New Layer dialog box. The two color bars in the dialog box represent the colors in their order on the color wheel. The upper color bar shows the color before the adjustment. The lower bar shows how the adjustment affects all of the hues at full saturation. 2. In the Adjustments panel, choose which colors to adjust using the Edit pop-up menu. Choose Master to adjust all colors at once. Choose one of the other preset color ranges listed for the color you want to adjust. 3. For Hue, enter a value or drag the slider until you are satisfied with the colors. The values displayed in the box reflect the number of degrees of rotation around the wheel from the original color of the pixel. A positive value indicates clockwise rotation. A negative value, counterclockwise rotation. Values can range from negative 180 to plus 180. 4. For saturation, enter a value or drag the slider to the right to increase the saturation or to the left to decrease it. The color shifts away from or toward the center of the color wheel. Values can range from negative 100 to plus 100. 5. For lightness, enter a value or drag the slider to the right to increase the lightness or to the left to decrease it. Values can range from negative 100 to plus 100. Specify the range of colors adjusted in the hue saturation adjustment. 1. Do one of the following. Click the hue saturation icon in the adjustments panel. Choose layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Click OK in the New Layer dialog box. 2. In the Adjustments panel, choose a color from the menu just above the sliders. Four color wheel values, in degrees, appear in the Adjustments panel. They correspond to the adjustment sliders that appear between the color bars. The two inner vertical sliders define the color range. The two outer triangle sliders show where the adjustments on the color range Fall off. Fall off is a feathering or tapering of the adjustments instead of a sharply defined on-off application of the adjustments. 3. Use either the eyedropper tools or the adjustment sliders to modify the range of colors. Click or drag in the image with the eyedropper tool to select a color range. To expand the range, click or drag in the image with the Add to Sample Eyedropper tool. To reduce the range of color, click or drag in the image with the Subtract from Sample Eyedropper tool. While an eyedropper tool is selected, you can also press Shift to add to the range, or Alt in Windows, or Option in Mac OS to subtract from it. Drag one of the white triangle sliders to adjust the amount of color falloff, feathering of adjustment, without affecting the range. Drag the area between the triangle and the vertical bar to adjust the range without affecting the amount of falloff. Drag the center area to move the entire adjustment slider, which includes the triangles and vertical bars, to select a different color area. Drag one of the vertical white bars to adjust the range of the color component. Moving a vertical bar from the center of the adjustment slider and closer to a triangle increases the color range and decreases the falloff. Moving a vertical bar closer to the center of the adjustment slider and away from a triangle decreases the color range and increases the falloff. Control drag in Windows or Command drag in Mac OS the color bar so that a different color is in the center of the bar. If you modify the adjustment slider so that it falls off into a different color range, the name in the edit menu changes to reflect this change. For example, if you choose yellow 
and alter its range so that it falls into the red part of the color bar, the name changes to red 2. You can convert up to six of the individual color ranges to varieties of the same color range, for example, red through red 6. Colorize a grayscale image or create a monotone effect. 1. If you are colorizing a grayscale image, choose Image, Mode, RGB Color to convert the image to RGB. Do one of the following to access the Hue Saturation Adjustment. Click the Hue Saturation icon in the Adjustments panel. Choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Hue Saturation. Click OK in the New Layer dialog box. 3. Select the Colorize option. If the foreground color is black or white, the image is converted to a red hue, 0 degrees. If the foreground color is not black or white, the image is converted to the hue of the current foreground color. The lightness value of each pixel does not change. 4. Optional. Use the hue slider to select a new color. Use the saturation and lightness sliders to adjust the saturation and lightness of the pixels.